Well, we are certainly thankful for the gifts of Bill Harris. His biblical wisdom and boldness to discuss some tough subjects are what is needed both in and out of the church today. Zach Bowers is with Bill. Well, you've stopped in from your world travels, Bill, to uh, <laughs> stop into Lima, Ohio here and just give us a little bit of wisdom and teaching and a lot to look forward to for your viewers this upcoming month. And we're going to talk about the first show of the month, which is, are you a growing Christian? Yeah. And I love right off the bat, I shared with you when you're talking about our engagement with the spirit world and God, you talk about it's not an event as when we first become a Christian but rather it's a daily process uh -huh. that we commit ourselves to God. Yeah, and, and that is so true because, Zach, very often we center on that event, and, and mm -hmm. it's a powerful event. Right. I mean, our lives change, <laughs> I mean, but we must understand that that's just the beginning. It yeah. is a process, and it goes on until, until you go home to be with the Lord. It, mm -hmm. It's a, just a process all the time, and the growing aspect of it must take place because there's no standstill in God. Yeah. You're either growing or you're lagging behind, and now you've got to do things to catch up so that you can get ahead. God wants growth and he wants fruit out of us. Yeah, and I wanna, I wanna focus on that, what you just said, because I think that's something that a lot of people don't realize or we, we um, overlook, is that there's no neutral when it comes to our relationship with God. It's either you're going in reverse or you're going forward. Yeah. Can you kind of unpack that for us? Well, basically, I think as we're growing and going forward, we're showing fruits of going forward. Mm. And the barometer of that is the fruit. And if you don't see fruit, Zach, very often there's no root. Mm. And the roots comes in where we're spending time in the Word of God, where we're spending time in prayer, seeking the Lord, where we're going to the Sunday school or some sort of a Bible class to learn how to unfold the Word of God and make it meaningful for us in our life and in our lifestyle mm. so that we know how to produce fruit. And that fruit is not just bringing others to Christ, that's very often what we think about, yeah. that, that's a part of it. But the fruit is behaving yourself <laughs> in Christ, you know? Yeah. How to live a godly life, that's a part of the fruit too. Well, and I know a lot of, and even us personally, it's a struggle to, to live that daily life if you're not, or to live that godly life if you're not spending that daily time with yeah. Him, because it is about those roots. And you talk a little bit about things that do exist based on Scripture, mm -hmm. that through a relationship with Christ, we can get we receive some powerful things, you know, divine wisdom you talk about and comprehensive insight. Mm -hmm. That's something I think we, we would all love and, and several other things as well. Well, God has, you know, there's one scripture in Psalms where it talks about forgetting uh, to, to, to love the Lord and forget not all his benefits. God mm -hmm. has a benefits package <laughs> for us. And a part of that is his wisdom and divine insight into life. And all wisdom and insight is, is taking life and putting it into perspective for mm -hmm. you for your daily uh, life and existence. And that kind of wisdom is needed so that we know how to deal with people, so I know how to relate with you versus sure. the person over here or the person over there, and so that I know how to relate to my God. One thing that God wants, He wants praise and worship, hmm. and, and He wants thanksgiving. And so we've got to give Him these things, and then we have to know how to love our fellow man. Yeah. Well, let's talk about maybe I think there's a lot of questions out there, but maybe we're talking about the people who are new believers or maybe stagnant believers. Yeah. And they have a lot of questions. And a lot of the questions the world is asking, as well as us, you know, about whether or not God really exists or yes. whether or not God's really looking out for me, mm -hmm. cares about my needs. And how can we be sure and, and find answers to those questions? I think that when we, when we understand the fact that what new Christians need, beginners, they need discipleship. And the mm. discipleship classes or meetings should be centered around not just the biblical aspects, but the worldly aspects. That is the challenges, the challenging questions coming from the world, the ones yeah. like you asked, does God really care about me? Does he, ev does he really exist? Is there a God out there? Yeah. When we can fashion our approach to answer and address those concerns that the new Christian has, we make the Bible come alive and <laughs> see that, yeah, it, it is a real living, breathing document that speaks right. to me today. Right. And there's... The other aspect of the daily relationship with him is it allows us to be cautious and to be aware of a lot of the distractions or the things that maybe are trying to pull us away. And yeah. so you talk about, I think, in big letters, it says beware, uh -huh. right? <laughs> because Satan's, I think Satan's biggest weapon against us is deceit. Hmm. I mean, he started that in the Garden of Eden and he hasn't changed his tactics yeah. at all. And so the deceit, no matter how it comes in the world, it's very shrewd. 
Uh, there's all kinds of semantics to take things that are right and make them wrong, take things that are wrong and make them right mm -hmm. to justify doing whatever. And when we can use the Word of God to show people where the deceit is. If you teach a person like my children, for instance, I've always said when I brought them up, if I teach them what is right, they'll recognize that which is wrong. Mm. That's what I'm saying.